want to make everyone aware. I'm Jerry I got Smith, you I'm the president of NWNA, okay. and I just want to welcome oh, you, ladies I don't and gentlemen, to our meeting tonight. We have uh, really uh, a great slate of, of programs and people, and I just wanted to remind, if you don't want to be recorded, you, you may not want to stand up and interact with us tonight. <laughs> you will appear on our channel, so... Uh, Ralph's going to control it. The camera's here. It comes this way. So you're pretty safe if you uh, duck back a little bit. Um, well, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So we have the flag on the slide. So let's do that. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thanks so much. I don't do enough of that, I don't think. But, um, <laughs> I'm going to be very limited. We have, I really want to have the mayor come up later, a little bit later, and uh, spend, you know, have him spend time with you rather than with me. And, um, but I want to welcome everyone here. I see some, uh, some city officials here, Sharon, Maureen, um, I don't, I, I can't see everyone in the crowd, so if I miss anybody, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, we went out and it appears that we have secured, Daniel has come forward, we do have a new public works chair, and we, we went out to change our bylaws to somehow lure uh, Don Epking here, who's really involved in so much in the city, but I thought it would be great to have him kick off a little bit of speech. He's a little bit off tonight. He's He's, he's, he's probably going to make this brief, but um, that, Don, thanks for coming out. Let me have you come up, and we'll talk a little bit about what's to come with tearing the streets up, getting ready for new utilities, and, um, and writing the check. So uh, please welcome Don Apkin. Um, when you're talking about utility extension, expansion projects, it's about construction. And if you've ever been around construction, you expect the unexpected. Now, the best way to face this is to know what's gonna happen, primarily. The main thing that people usually have a hard time understanding is the right of way. And um, that can cause a lot of problems, uh, uh, consternation or whatever. So if you have neighbors that have trees planted along the street, or if you have uh, trees planted along the street or every, anything else that we're going to mention, it has to be removed and you should start that now. Uh, not wait until they start construction because if they tear it out, not good. So uh, the main thing is, uh, my background is I spent 30 years in water and wastewater design of uh, equipment for plants. Uh, I was on many construction jobs, small, large, very large around the world. So. Uh, very familiar with what happens. And like I said, the main thing is, is be prepared. Um, if you have a problem, we have a liaison that uh, came through, you know, the, uh, contra through the contractor. So that's gonna help out a lot. We also had a lessons learned that was put in 2019, did it? Yes. 2019, and uh, we have that, that'll be online. So you can take a look at that. What happened was we looked at problems from the last time we had the UEP and had suggestions for the city and for the contractors where we can make progress. But the main thing is, if you do have a problem, you know, mention it. We can go through channels and get it fixed. And but again, the main thing is, is have patience because it's going to take a while. But the city has improved quite extensively versus the last time around up here. They've learned lessons themselves, and I think you'll see a lot better uh, progress this time. Uh, as it's laid out. But again, if you have any questions, I'm here basically to give advice and look at things and help you out with any problems that come up. But uh, just uh, glad to be of help wherever I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just, just to go back, this we're going to publish this. Uh, have we done that yet, Ralph? I'm not sure if it's up live on our site. The, 
Um, this what is the, the it, it's kind of the ebook. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, you can't email it. It's a huge, huge file, but it's great. And, um, you know, Zone 1 is using it now, but this, I pulled this slide out because whether you know it or not, your, your property pretty much, the easement starts really with the city right at the telephone pole in front of your house. So just be aware of that. I mean, I had no idea. And then, you know, you look at your driveway, if you have pavers or, or concrete, but that right away, you really start paying attention to that. So what I wanted to tell you, some of, some of you are just closing, right? And you're thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna plant my landscape. Hold off, hold off on some of that landscape work, you know, toward the street. I know everybody wants uh, palm trees lining their street, and that's, you know, the game of neighbors is to create this long row. But if you can, hold off. But go online, and right now it's preparation. What can we do to kind of talk to you? know, some of those, you look at some of those mailboxes now, they look very nautical, and they may cost you $1,000 to put in. You may want to wait. Put in the cheap one now before the street come, comes uh, ripping up and everything else. So um, we're going to be all over this. This is, um, you know, this is planned for 2025, and, you know, it's tied to... A lot of revenue and it's tied to your tax bill and everything else so unlike some other delays I don't foresee this delay happening I see them getting right on it they've been pretty good on schedule so just know in 2025 just a few short months from today um, we're gonna be uh, dealing with this but hopefully we're on it we have a good plan and good contractors and we can work together and get through it so that said, go back to this, and if you download uh, on nwk.com, we'll have it up there so you can download it. And now I'll turn it over to John Smart. And give John a hand, he's been busy. He's been on the news. <laughs> Pretty much the face of NWNA now. Thanks, John. Totally because you were busy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to work. Uh, I don't think I... Projects coming to Cape Coral, right? Seven Islands, most of you, if you look at the mic, please. Thank you. Is this come out? Okay. Can you hear me now? You're, you're, you're around the stand. Thank you. Just sure. in case. <laughs> Disaster, and I haven't even started yet. <laughs> okay, so Seven Islands. I wish I had pictures and architectural drawings and you know schematics of the islands and stuff but we we're not quite there yet right so uh, we are participating the city's been working with a the developer they've been having monthly meetings uh, and we were um, we're participating the NWNA is here Jerry and I have been going to the meetings probably online but we're participating and, um, and you can't beat that right so um, we are getting uh, asked for input, and we're given the input, and it's a, can you hear? I don't know how singers do this. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we're participating, and they're asking questions, and that's a good, I mean, asking questions of us, and they want our input. So that's a good thing, and we're giving them, giving them our input. Um, but I gotta say that, uh, you know, this, this D1 concept that's been approved for a couple years now, and uh, the city is sticking to the D1 concept, and so is the developer. So uh, that's another good thing, right? We're not getting, you know, some big drastic change from the D1 concept. We're getting so far, so good. Um, and the city staff, I mean, they're, they're holding to it. So, um, um, Let's see. Collaboration is dynamic. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. It's good. Um, the, uh, okay, so the biggest thing is that uh, the, the developer's been working with DEP, and they've been working really close with them for a couple months to make sure they get the, um, the water right, the water flow, the water quality, 
Um, the developer's really interested in getting that done right. So they are um, listening to DEP. They have an engineer from DEP that kind of shadows the, um, the, 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 um, the project as they, they put in for their permits, things like that. So that's a good thing, right? They're working on the environment. Um, so, that's it for the slide, right? Huh? It is, you need yeah. help. There. Okay, so, um, where they're at, um, think of it as a, as a portrait, and the artist is just sketching in, you know, what they want to paint, what they want to produce. So that's about where they're at, you know? We've had, been in a couple of meetings and the, the designs kind of, uh, you know, they change a little bit. So we don't want to give any information out that would have you think that uh, something's going to happen that won't happen. So when we get information, we're allowed to release it or the developer releases it, then you know, we can do that. But for right now, um, it's a work in progress and um, we're meeting on a monthly basis. We'll see where we end up. Hopefully we get something we can show you maybe by the end of the year. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, now the other pro project is- Any idea when they're gonna start? Oh, they gotta get done with this part first. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Five years. Um, um, maybe even next year, I don't know. You know, infrastructure, sure. something like that. So, but um, a lot of it depends on the permitting from DEP and all that, so. Now the other project is Cape Coral uh, Grove Town Center, Coral Grove. It's kind of Coral Grove at the Cape. So we've been following this for you know a year and a half when it was a town center, and we weren't quite sure what was going to be there. But then we started looking. We looked at the company behind it. It's a company called the Auto Holding Company out of New York. They do big things on Broadway, Madison Avenue, Fifth Avenue, all that. So they have a. Um, moved into Florida to do some things, and somehow they picked Cape Coral to do this. And it has a lot to do with the, you know, what Cape Coral can be in the future, so where it's heading. But if you look at it, it's a town center. Now, on Pine Island Road, there's six to 7,000 apartment units that are planned and in permitting or even being constructed um, just between Burnstone and Santa Barbara. So there's a lot of apartment units. And this one will have 12 to 1300. But what you're getting with this that you don't get with the others is a town center and stores, restaurants, coffee shops, all this underneath the apartments along the town center. There'll be some in the back, but you have some here in the town center and you know they're built on top of stores and restaurants. You'll have a center with the you know, places for people to gather, covered areas, uh, you know, like I said, coffee shops, pubs, um, all kinds of things. There'll be some entertainment. There'll be an outdoor stage. There's, you know, one version had a theater, one had a, a bowling alley. So, but they're of course not firm on anything that's going in yet. That's still that's a work in progress too. But they've cleared the field. If you dri drove down uh, Pine Island Road lately, you've seen the field that's been cleared out on the west side of Bubba's, between Bubba's and the electrical station. And this is 131 acres, goes all the way back and then around the German American Club. So it's gonna be a big project, but it's gonna have a lot of retail. Okay, anyway, there's gonna be a lot of retail and um, there'll be uh, like box stores on the outside and places for people to gather. You know, in time, your friends and relatives will come down and it'll be a good day trip for them. Um, it'll be a big attraction for Cape Coral. So these two, Cape, uh, Coral Town Center, and you can go to coralgrove.com and you know check it like once a month. There's all kinds of changes to it. And they're, they're always showing things that they're going to be doing, or at least thinking of doing. And um, so the field's cleared. They may even start, you know, December. Uh, we'll see on infrastructure. But um, you can see, you know, you've got uh, box stores out here. Box stores out here, you've got inside here, all kinds of things uh, uh, for people to enjoy. They spend a whole day there. So we're big on that because we think, uh, you know, they talk about um, Cape Coral's flowing with possibilities. Well, this is one of those things that has a lot of possibilities. So keep your eye on that. 
and keep your island seven islands or golf gateway. Is there condos or is it just apartments? I think it's just apartments right now, but there may be townhouses. They have other parts of that that they haven't really talked about. And, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But they are opening an office. Their development director is down here and they're opening an office soon. And um, she lives in Cape Coral, so she knows the area. Um, but this is a big company and they got the they got the resources to make this happen. So and it's you know right around the corner here to, to get started. So anyway, that's two big projects coming to Cape Coral. Game changers. going to be handled on Pine Island during these constructions. Oh, that's, 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 a, that's a different committee. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I think the county's working on plans to expand Pine Island Road. Um, you know, um, don't, don't have to, that's, that's the city. We're just reporting what we see. You know, we think this is a big project. This is gonna be a big game changer for Northwest Cape. It's going to be a draw. People will be coming from all over to, to uh, see that. So it's good. And of course, seven hours. Okay. I know it's not on your agenda. And Island Pearl, any information on that? They cleared it. Sure. But not I think they're getting ready to tear down some of those houses. Okay. That's what I've heard, but I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't seen anything. They have an old permit in from a couple of years ago. I think they're going to probably want to update it. You know, the, the things change. You got something going across on Veterans and Pine Island Road. Really really like Gilbane and um, thing, uh, which is a lot of apartments and some retail and stuff. But you know, we so if you're the developer on that, you might say, eh, maybe I'll do something a little different. What, uh, what this lady just asked about? Uh, what is that? Can you tell me what? what oh, Highland Pearl. Yes. What is it? That's that's that. Uh, you know, when when they had the hurricane, all those uh, telephone poles were in that one yes, lot yes. across from Pudex. Okay, that's Highland Pearl, and then there's a street, and then this land next to it with some houses. The houses are going to get torn down. Yes. Now they were going to put in a, um, a retail, like a Dunkin' Donuts, and we think the Dunkin' Donuts is still coming, but you, know, you never know. Um, and so that and some retail, but it just seems like, go bigger, I don't know. But we, you know, we haven't seen anything, so, but when we do, we'll let you know. So, okay, time to move on to... Yeah, I have, um, you know, in attendance is uh, from Economic Development. Sharon, come on up some city staff and pretty much controlling the uh, the operation. Sharon, why don't you, she just came up to me and said, why don't we share a little bit more? It's so hard for us. We're, we're in these meetings and we're across from people and they're, they're not ready to release information to the public yet. And we're like, why can't we release this? You know, we just, we have a, just an anxious room. So one better. So Seven Islands, so Gulf Gateway, they are sponsoring our social event. So I said, well, if you can't say anything, you gotta come to our social event and sponsor it. And then, so you get in the crowd with everyone and you have everyone get around their team, come to the social next month and just have, have a beer with them. Just ask the questions that you wanna ask, get into the crowd with them. And I think it'll work out real well. But Sharon's I got a few things to uh, add. So I just wanted to um, provide a little bit more information on some of the questions that I heard. So uh, going back to Seven Islands and the time frame, uh, it was mentioned that there is a environmental permit. It has to be submitted and approved. So a lot of the timeline is being driven by how that process happens, if there are some things that have to be corrected. So it's playing off of that. Um, they are expecting to put in the actual permit um, in November. And so we'll be able to see uh, how things are going and if there's some uh, major changes or if things are looking good. And I think as uh, was mentioned today, the developers have been working closely with um, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and some of the other environmental um, individuals that review it. So they're having those conversations along the way. We, we believe that they will uh, move forward on a, on, a, on a good track. Now, as far as the um, uh, traffic on Pine Island Road, so I think you probably all heard about the Pine Island Vision Plan. There's some widening that's happening there. But there's an alternative entrance that the developer for Cape Coral Town Center will be looking at. So all the traffic will not be coming off of Pine Island Road. Uh, the infrastructure plans are still being reviewed and have not been approved. 
Um, but all of the traffic would not be coming in from Pine Island Road. Great, thanks. Thanks so much. Our guest speaker. Yeah, I can't say enough. I mean, we did meet we did meet with Cindy Cruz. It's funny because Ellen L, a developer, has Cindy Cruz who lives in Cape Coral. We met with her for coffee at the Perfect Cup. And this is what we're doing. We're, we're actually going to the developers. And I gotta tell you, you know, they're a little fearful meeting a neighborhood association directly. And until we say, look, everything we talk about is off the record, but we, we just wanna have developer relationship, have some coffee let you know who we are, and you'll get to a point where you may need our members or you, there may be something that comes up that we can help you with. So these are kind of the barriers we're breaking down right now. We're going direct to the developers, and you know we're honoring some of their off-the-record discussions with us, but I can tell you, you can tell by looking at me, I'm very, very um, pumped up about both projects. Uh, I can tell you that they're committed you know, and the city's committed, and the developers are committed. So it's a, it really is going to change the landscape, not only of North Cape, but the entire city. This, this really is really an unbelievable project. And so much is gonna come. It's gonna be great to have these meetings when we'll have them here, and just kind of share the vision with you, like we'll have the mayor in a minute. So uh, thanks so much for hanging through. Um, <clears throat> I know John Bashaw asked me to get involved in this directly. I got on the boat, we went into the key ditch like so many before us. Um, in my last newsletter, A1 um, construction is going to do the work. And you know what, and, and there's a lot of worry about how did the mangroves make out during the hurricane? Um, how much damage? And you know what's amazing, we're up there in the key ditch entrance and there's a thing called tannins that I guess the mangroves excrete. Um, and it turns the water into like a coffee color. So we get up there and it's so coffee colored, we can't even see the rocks. So it's funny when I'm being told by some of the people that actually work in these ditches is that the, kayaker, the kayakers kind of dam the waterway so boats can't get through, and it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I understand why you would do that, but you know, if you're a boater, it, it just drives you nuts, so. Um, what I wanted to tell you is that when Mike Chisholm was here, um, we talked about maintenance of the key ditch and getting into the key ditch. And John Bashaw put together, through Navionics, a list of coordinates that Mike, working with Mike Ilches, and we want to plot the signage so you can navigate all the way out to the harbor. This is the first step. So that permit we're working on right now with Florida DEP. So I'm in a meeting uh, with Mike, who's intern at the time, and, and also um, Nikki Ross, who's intern at the time. They both get the full-time positions over the last month, right? So now, um, you know, they're, they're, they're moving forward. So we need the permit to get into the key ditch to actually lay down the signage so we can get from the spreader canal all the way through and out into the harbor. So this is a little bit of work that we had to do to do that. So while we're in there, we thought we would take advantage of the ability to trim the mangroves. So if we can put signage up, and get the mangroves trimmed, and get the rocks out of there, which we already have approval to do. Um, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna have to leave this mic because I wanna show you something. Crystal Lake is up here. And if you've been to Burnt Store ramp and boat launch, Picture another very busy area of launching boats to get into the North Spreader. So Mike's vision is that you have a lot of activity up here and a lot of boat activity up here, and we have an 85 minute really meandering getting through and out. 
So when the signage is in and the mangroves are trimmed, there's a pathway out. You're putting a lot of boat traffic up there. It's going to all tie into this whole project of getting out this way. So just sharing with you um, a little bit of that. So questions? Yeah, once this is marked and trimmed back, my understanding earlier, there's still not a whole lot of depth for boats bigger than, say, pontoon boats, maybe 20 yeah. footers, and that you still won't be able to pass each other. So how much will this really alleviate traffic issues and save time? You know, one, once, you know, I think it's 25% <laughs> of trimming, and, and your point is great. It, it, there's going to have to be some removal of, of, of dredging and everything else, but once once the pathway we can we can get back in there and kind of assess that then and what we've been doing is bringing people with us so i know there's been a lot of people who've called me directly and i think what you're going to find is we're going to find out I, I don't know it's it's a long area i do know those who have made it it takes roughly about 30 to 40 minutes but you're ending up at the at the and right into the harbor where you're cresting on the top of Wokelia. so. And I know there were originally three options or three thoughts. One of them was a direct cutout from where Seven Islands could approximately be. Is that going to be also? I mean, I I'm not in favor of this. I don't think this really is going to be a, a great solution for all our problems. Yeah, you know, it would be great. Hey, let's just cut right here and get out, right? Let's just do that. But you got to, you got to understand. We're starting to understand. Uh, there's a balance in nature. There's, there's things that we can do, and there's things that that are challenging. Seven Islands is built, and it's a Gulf Gateway. Um, when Gulf Gateway, when we realize that. Who knows? Um, I don't know, but right now, we have maintenance permits that allow going into the key ditch, which is a pathway out. On a super tide, you can get out with a boat. You just wanna get the rocks out so it doesn't do the damage. It is a way out, and if you live up there, this is appealing, I can tell you. I've talked to people up in the Crystal Lake area. It's very appealing. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I think that, that, you know, I saw the original plans. There were three cuts, right? And I'm like, wow, this is great. We're going to have three cuts when I first moved here. I didn't know anything, right? It's great. When are they going to start with the cut? And, and everything. So it, it, it is a difficult proposition, but, you know, there's a way. There's a way if you just do it right. Yes. Thanks for your positive attitude, by the way. Uh, are, is that going to come right out at uh, Gulf? At Gulf? Two Pines. So Two Pines is uh, pretty much a natural, there's a natural uh, cut there that actually leads into What's the closest pines. big road? Like, What's the closest road? Yeah, I'm just trying to forget geolog like, I, I live on Boulevard Store and Kissing, okay, so. Calusa. Jackarando. Jackarando, yeah, excuse me, Jackarando. That's where it's going to be at? Yeah. 31st. That's how far out. That's that's all, I mean. That's where I live. That's gonna be straight out from there. Uh, yeah. It, well, it meanders down. I mean, go go look at. It. We had a presentation on this, which is really in depth. I actually, showing the video. Our video, the video of actually taking this trip, where we start and end, is on our site, and um, it's amazing. You know, it's it's gutsy. You know, here yeah. you are going and. My neighbor doesn't now, but I yeah. just I just wanted to get. But is it does it come out of like he said it came out of Gulf Stream. That's where this cut started. No, 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 no. So, yeah, it's it's so it's just south of Jacaranda. It's a big wide opening. So, uh, you know, I've been in there. There's a lot of water flow. It's a lot of you know. It's funny. We had the guy dive. He couldn't see the rock, so he dives in the water with a mask and the coffee, 
and these measuring rocks, we have to bring a drone in there and, map, and I have to map out every extracted rock so we can get them out of the way. So uh, this is big time. I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but I'm telling you, it's uh, my guy and or myself are in the, we're at their office. We're talking about this. But, you know, when you look at Nikki as someone new taking over, uh, as manager of, of the harbor, um, they want to do some things. They, I, I said, why have all of this park land if no one can use it, right? Why have it, you know? So uh, she gets it. So anyway, that's uh, that's to come. Hopefully this works. Good. Let's go down this slide. Okay, there we go. So, so that, this is something you may or may not like, but I'm gonna go there. <laughs> I know some of you like to rip it down the spreader. Um, I, the past me, I'm like, I can't believe it. But, um, but you gotta realize, I live halfway down. So, it, you know, I understand, it's getting dark, I gotta get home, and I got 80 minutes to go, I get it. But there is a minimum wait. So, I also know there's a lot of VRBO people. I know there's people that are friends, family, get in your boat, and they don't know that there's a, a speed restriction in the spreader. They just don't know. I've, I've seen those people, they have no idea. So we thought, hey, if we're gonna mark out the key ditch, why not put in some buoys with minimum signage extending all the way up past the manatee zone by Serena Vista, and just, just inform people that this is a slow wake zone. So. Um, I know there's been stuff in the press about, no, 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 it's no wake, you know, and you know, what's right, but the minimum wake signage, that, that kind of works is there to protect the manatees and, and all the marine life in the spider. So we'd like to get that done as well. And with that, I, I really, really want to thank Mayor John Gunther for coming. And when I was with him, and I, I, I try to meet twice a year, we sit down and I and I when I went with him the other day, I said, You won't believe this, Mayor, I don't have anything for you. I don't I'm not gonna ask you to do anything. He goes, What? And I said <laughs> I said, but I really would like to talk to you about your vision, you know, for Northwest Cape. There's so much going on here. It's why I live here, it's why I reside here full time. There's so much going on here. And I, you know, I said maybe begin with begin with the end in mind. What does it look like? You know, and um, so let's welcome our mayor, and uh, hopefully you can set some up. Yeah, he was the first person to ever come to my office and didn't want something, so uh, I told him he could come back anytime he wanted. <laughs> First of all, it's an honor to be here today. Uh, thank you for the invitation. You know, I always look forward to get out into the community. Uh, I think uh, typically you can get more out speaking one on one like you like we are here tonight than uh, you can ever get at City Hall. So I enjoy coming out. So I'll, I'll talk for a little bit, but then I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask the questions. Hopefully, uh, I'll have some answers for you. You know, when you look back. The history of Cape Coral and I know probably many of you in this room have been here a lot longer than I have. I moved here back in 2007 uh, but Cape Coral really morphed into something that it wasn't supposed to be. You know we were supposed to be a retirement bedroom community and look where we are today uh, almost 215,000 people and we will be a top five city in the state of Florida before it's over with. We're only 55% built out. So we have a lot to, lot to do and a, a, a lot to plan for. And when I say we morphed into something else, the reason that I say that is I really believe we're at a fork in the road. You know, we as a city um, have evolved in what we are today. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm the type of person that likes to control our destiny. So I think it's so important to have a good vision moving forward to get to where we want to be, not necessarily where we might end up like we have now. So I think that's so important. And a lot of decisions that I know our council makes, you know, while I'm mayor, I may not see the benefit, but I know 
future council, future residents, we will in the future. And that's what I'm really emphasizing what I'm gonna do while I'm mayor, is to make sure that we put a plan in place, we have a vision. And a few things that we've implemented the last couple of years to make sure we do that. You know, uh, we revisit our strategic plan about uh, 18 months, two years ago. Uh, and uh, we have a good plan uh, with our strategic plan. It's a lot of stuff that goes across our desk. First question we have to ask ourselves, does it fall in our strategic plan? The answer is yes, that's probably something we should be working on. If the answer is no, then maybe we shouldn't be uh, emphasizing on that particular topic. Emphasize on the important components to make sure uh, that we're meeting that vision that we set ourselves out for. So when you look at the Northwest, it's almost an open slate out here. So I think it's very important to make sure that we have a plan in place and learn from our mistakes. We've had, we've definitely made some mistakes in the past. To give you an example, look at Pine Island Road. You know, we got uh, started building commercially on Pine Island Road with very little restrictions. And uh, then all of a sudden we realized uh, maybe we should develop a Pine Island Road district. And we did that and we emphasized and controlled, you know, just because you have growth, that, that's not always a good thing. I think smart growth is much, more important. And that's what the Palm Island Road District did for us. We were able to curtail exactly what type of development, where it was, and uh, I think that's very important. We did the same thing with uh, the burnt store quarter. Unfortunately, you know, we did the, uh, we did all that research, we got that community input, we developed the Palm Island, or the uh, burnt store road corridor, but unfortunately, this past legislative session, there was a bill passed. Uh, Senate Bill 250, which pretty much restricted the plan that we put in place for the Palm Island Road, I'm sorry, for the Burke Store Road District. Now that particular uh, Senate bill is in effect until June 30th of 25. And then right after that, we wanna make sure that we put that plan in place or maybe even uh, take a look at it uh, before then and see if uh, we can even make it better. You know, I think that the next commercial corridor uh, for our city up in this area is definitely going to be uh, Burnt Store Road. So we got to make sure we get it right, get it right the first time. Uh, we don't want to see all the, uh, the storage facilities, the dollar stores, those sorts of things. And I'm not saying that that's not a need in our community, uh, but I think we have to make sure, like I mentioned before, smart growth, we put them in the right places. So I'm not saying, no, we don't want them. I'm just saying, let's put them in the right place. And I think when you develop these corridors, you can really develop a plan on how you want to develop, not only for today, but for the, for the future as well. You know, I heard you guys speak a little bit tonight about Southern Island's project in the town center. Uh, most definitely the town center will be built before Southern Island's only because of all the environmental permits that Southern Islands has to go through. To give you an example, uh, and I know you've heard the word job club, uh, and you know we applied for the Army Corps of Engineers and, and FDEP permits for that project two years ago. We still haven't got them, two years ago. Unfortunately, we don't have any control over that. You know, I'm still, I reach out to uh, my state Legislators, uh, the congressman actually asked staff for an update uh, last week on where we are with all of our permits in the city when it has to do with the FDEP and the Army Corps of Engineers because uh, every couple months I go shake that tree and I make sure that they didn't forget about me and uh, when I want them to know that we're still we're still waiting on those permits and uh, you know. I've been a developer my whole life uh, for the last 36 years, a business owner. I'm the type of person, if I want to get something done, I want to do it now. And that's probably one of the hardest uh, things I had to learn when I was elected back in 2017. You know, government, you know, there's a, there's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of bureaucracy that you have to, to go through. Uh, I'll give an example is the cut. You know, if it was 
Me, we'd be out there tomorrow digging, cutting mangroves, marking. You know, I'm a boater. I go boating every weekend. Uh, I know how important that is for our community. Unfortunately, you have to go through the permits with FDEP. You have to go through the permits with the Army Corps engineers. Um, you have state lands that we're going through. So there's a, there's a lot of obstacles there. It is a priority for us. Um, it's something that we're working on, as Jerry said. We'll continue to work on that. Um, and I'm hoping one day, uh, sooner rather than later, we'll have that cut through there because I know how important that is for the residents in the northwest part of the city. Uh, you know, again, I'm a boater. I've went down, you know, through Matt Lache to go out. Um, and I, I live right here off of Embers. So I don't have to go as far as some of you up in the northern part. Uh, so I can sympathize with how long that ride is. So the sooner we can get that uh, cut in, the better for me. But it's not something that's going to happen next year. Like Jerry said, we're going to probably do some baby walks, I call it, the beginning. Let's go in, cut the mangroves back to 25%. Let's mark the channel and get that process going. There's going to be some dredging. I've actually ridden through there myself with John Bashaw sitting there in the back. Um, and I mean, there's a couple spots we got out and pushed a bit and about uh, a foot of water. So it is shallow in some parts, but I was sh shocked on how wide, once you get back in there, there's some wide basins back up in there as well. Uh, so I think it is an opportunity. We'll just have to continue to push on with that to make sure we can bring that to fruition one day. Um, as far as growth, like I told you before, smart growth, uh, I'll pick all day over just growth. How can you do that? Pine Island Road District, Burnt Store Road District, looking at our zoning as well. You know, when you look at some of our uh, zoning, um, and I think it's something that uh, I'm gonna really uh, look into uh, next year hard is, you know, when it comes to commercial development, our city is pretty broad. Again, I've been uh, a builder for 36 years, uh, had a license in four states, probably worked in about 30, 35 different counties. Uh, one thing I noticed here versus some other places where I've worked, you know, when you talk about commercial, places where I come from, you would have a variety of commercial uh, zoning. You could have C1, C2, C3, C4, and the reason that you had that is that's how you can control that growth and put things where you want them in the city. You know, we, we have a very broad uh, commercial uh, zoning, and that's why we have some of the problems that we do out there. So I think what we could do is take a look at storage facilities. That may be a, a C3 zoning. And then we pick where C3 is within the city and where some of those could be. And that's how you can kind of navigate that growth and put things, I think, uh, in the right place. And I think that's so important. Because if you look back over the last 50 years, there's been times where we didn't do that. And I'm a firm believer, and I say this all the time, if you want a different result, you have to have a different approach. If you do the same thing that we've been doing for the last 20 years, you're always going to have the same result. And I'll give you an example. I ran in 2017, and when I ran, I stood in the room like this, and I told people that we have a 90 to 10 percent commercial ratio when it comes to commercial and residential tax base. And after I got elected, I went back and actually did some research, and I looked the last 20 years. We've had that same 90 to 10 percent commercial to residential tax base. Now they say in the community uh, a 60-40 ratio is great. We'll never get there, but I'm hoping we can get to an 80-20. And when you look at that, and you look back over the last 20 years, that 90 to 10 percent ratio has been the same for the last 20 years. Why is that? We do the same thing. So if you have the same approach, you're gonna have the same 
result. And I think it's so important, if you want to make a change, uh, then you have to make that change. And a lot of people don't like change. Especially when, you know, I notice it with staff. Oh, we've been doing this for years this way. But that doesn't mean that's the best way. Uh, and our new city manager uh, that we have now, Mike Ilchism, that's one thing I like about him. He will find a way. If you give him, this is the result we're looking for. He will find a way to get there. And I think that's important. And that may be a way that we're not used to. But I'm a firm believer, if you can get to the result that we're looking for, this is our goal. It doesn't really matter as long as you don't do it illegally or unethically. As long as we obtain our goal, I'm okay if we do something different. And he's that type of guy. And, you know, I've, I've been here since 17 and worked with Mike in a variety of different uh, levels. And he's that guy. He's the guy that you give him the goal and he'll get us there. And he'll look outside the box to make sure that we achieve what we're trying to get accomplished. And I think that's so important because, you know, just doing the same old thing with the same old results, for me, it, that's not what I'm looking for. You know, I get people come in my office sometimes, um, you know, and they're upset. And they say, you know, I've been living here for 60 years. And this is the way that, uh, you know, we've done it for the last 60 years. And the first thing that I say, and I'll give you an example. I'm sure you all heard about J.C. Park. Uh, and we have a lot of people who've been here for many years um, that uh, want to keep the park the way it is. They think it's fine the way it is. And they don't want to change anything. But what I'm doing, I, I'm planning for the next 20, 30 years. I'm planning for our kids and our grandkids. And if that means we do something different, uh, then that's, that's what I'm going to support, to make sure that the goal is there, to make sure that we bring a better quality of life to our city. And if that means doing something different, I'm okay with that. I'm not saying that citizens input's not input important because it is very important but together we can sit down i'm the kind of guy that i like to sit down at the table roll my sleeves up and okay let's get this worked out let's see where our goal is what do we want to get accomplished and how we're going to get there and that's how i try every day when i go to city hall to do that uh, sometimes uh, you know i got people that's on board so sometimes i don't and, uh, but I try to keep the best interest of the 215,000 people that live here. You know, we may have 20 people to show up at a council meeting. And I think uh, Don mentioned a bit, but he left. The one gentleman in the back that said something, the other guy booed. And uh, Don said, boy, that sounds like a council meeting. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, that's nothing. But, uh, you know, I think it's very important to listen. Uh, sometimes uh, when you listen, you'll gain a different perspective. I think that's extremely important. I think citizens' input, this isn't my community, this is our community. And I want to know what you want. The Northwest, like I said early on, I think it's an open slate. We have a lot of possibilities here. And when you have meetings like this, you have discussions uh, to find out what you want. You live here just like I do. So it's not my way or the highway for sure. I wanna make sure that uh, you get that community buy-in, you get that community support, and you know exactly what our goal is. So I know that I can go to City Hall and, and fight for that, for that goal for you. Um, two parks I know you have in the Northwest, I'll, uh, I mentioned uh, you got Tropicana Park. Um, Tropicana Park uh, has gotten its uh, FDEP permit. We are still waiting on our Army Corps permit. That one usually comes a little quicker than the first. So that uh, that's, that's pretty good. Crystal Lake, we've gotten both permits. So we've gotten the Army Corps and the FDEP permit. That's actually out for bid. I believe the bids are due uh, end of the month or here shortly. Uh, we'll open those up. Uh, probably next month. Uh, eventually, the city manager will make a recommendation that will come back to council. We'll vote on it. So I think uh, hopefully by the beginning of the year, you'll uh, you'll see that particular park moving forward. 
Um, I heard uh, Pine Island Road uh, mentioned a little bit. We all know Pine Island Road. Uh, you know, I sit on the uh, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization here in the county as well. I'm the vice chair of that particular board. Uh, and they look at all the transportation needs of the whole county. When I looked at the uh, Pine Island Road, myself and actually uh, Council Member Hayden, uh, this was uh, something that he really <coughs> looked at as well. Knew that uh, what we have here today, it doesn't meet the need that we have today, not to mention the growth that we're experiencing and what the growth is here in the future. So I think what we did was we were proactive. We looked at the uh, F FDOT, Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, Pine Island Road wasn't even on the radar to even start looking at until 2035. And we knew that that was unacceptable. Now, most of you probably don't know, but one of the first things that you do when you look at a particular roadway to see if you want to increase uh, the roadway uh, due to the either capacity or the growth, you have to do a, a planning, uh, pd and &E study, they call it, which is uh, uh, basically planning development engineering. Uh, just for that roadway from veterans and burnt store out, out to the county line, um, that particular pd and &E study is $5 million. So what we did uh, to be proactive in the city, in last year's budget, we put two and a half million dollars towards the PD&E study and started that study. So it's in the process now. We also put another two and a half million dollars in our budget for this year. So we've basically put the five million dollars up front to do the PD&E study. And we've been told by FDOT since we've done that 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 will accelerate that project. So uh, we know it's a need, uh, so that's why we, we basically bought into that need, hoping in 2035 or when the project uh, becomes uh, a project and construction begins, we're hoping to be able to get that $5 million back uh, because they would have paid for that uh, if we had waited till 2035. So we were just proactive, put the money up front so we could do that. So they're just some of the things uh, real quick. Uh, I wanna give everybody an opportunity to answer any questions, and then I can talk some more if we have time after that. Yes, ma'am. Um, speaking of roadways, first for road being an evacuation route for hurricanes, if we still have a bottleneck on that, which makes it like a real issue with the booming population of the Northwest. And I know, I understand it's a county road, but I want to know, do you have any influence to get them to prioritize that? Yeah. Like it's a huge issue. Yeah, the county and the MPO uh, both um, have put that as a priority. We're trying to move that project up. The county uh, wants to move that project up as well. Because like you said, it's an emergency evacuation route. That particular uh, roadway, and we're also in discussions with, uh, over on the northeast side of the city, uh, taking a look at a Del Prado North extension all the way out to I-75. They're doing a study now, FDOT is, uh, to see if we can add a new uh, interchange there uh, to, to gain access or to exit. Uh, so that particular roadway on the Northeast is important uh, for the hurricane evacuation. If we can get it out all the way out to 75, and getting the rest of uh, Burnstore Road. So it is a priority and that's something that we're pushing forward. Yes, sir. Well, touch on uh, Burnstore Road again, and it's a smart road for a person to road. It's already decided that Pine Island Road is insufficient. Mm -hmm. okay. They just did all this work on Burnstore Road and they're saying all this new development and projects are coming to that corridor besides the evacuation rate uh, route, why wouldn't they have done three lanes each side with all that wasted median space in the middle, okay? Or in three years from now, they're gonna say, oh, so Burnstall Road's insufficient now, let's rip it all up. Rip it all up again. Well, as a part of the study, then they, would they, and I agree with you. Um, it's already, it's already 
Well, the same with all the new devices. Well, with the, with the traffic. The same thing like Pine Island. It's with the traffic counts that we have now, now uh, that road can be extended to a third lane all the way out. Well, why uh, didn't they do it when they just hit it? I would rather get the two lanes. I would get the two. Well, it's not obsolete by today's standards. If if you look at the uh, traffic engineer report, but I would much rather have two lanes all the way out first and then come back and do that. Well, that too. Because uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want three lanes to go to nowhere. <laughs> so to me, let's get the two lanes all the way through first and then come back and take but a second that point. Section, that section from veterans to Kismet. Once all this development comes in, and you're saying like Carl, uh, Carl Grove, and then if and when Seven Islands comes in, and then Tropicana Park, and then Crystal Lake Park, that section is the section that's going to be critical. I agree, and it, there's room for expansion, and it's a county road, so we'll have to go to the county uh, and work with them. Uh, I would just ask, Mayor, repeat the question. Sure. So yeah, so everyone. Can Okay, I'm sorry. Next question. Yes, sir, all the way in the back. Uh, I was looking for an update on Festival Park and also uh, in the Walmart Super Center is still planning on being built up on Pine Island Road. Yeah, I do know uh, they're still in the discussion with the uh, Super Walmart out on Pine Island Road. That particular project. Also, right next door, I don't know if you know this, the e Health had purchased some property there. And then you have the town center across uh, Pine Island Road. Um, it also, uh, they're, they're, they're looking at an intersection there for all three of those projects. And we may have to, uh, you know, change, change the entrance to those three projects to try to accommodate all three of them. So that we are doing. Um, but Super Walmart, we're still in discussion. Um, I will tell you, over the last six years, they seem to be hot and cold. Um, you know, we have our economic uh, development manager here. You know, sometimes it seems like they're kind of real hot and they want to get something done, but then it kind of goes cold. Wouldn't you, uh, wouldn't you agree to that? Yes, I agree. All right. <laughs> Where are we at uh, with Festival Park? I know. Uh... Yeah, bidding for Festival Park is anticipated to go up February, or excuse me, um, was supposed to go up early last month as we get in. Um, we have the permits that we received, and the contract duration is about 480 days with the total work plan duration. Um, so you should see work up there very soon. Okay. Yes, sir. Just um, with, with the parts, we've got bids coming back. Are we are we prepared to prioritize them if the bids are just exorbitant? Well, I will tell you that the bids are higher. Uh, we have already allocated some monies and set aside for any overages that we're going to have because we know we're going to have. You know, if you look at uh, you know the cost of housing the builder over the last couple of years has really gone up. Um, one thing I will say, and I, I would assume you're talking about the. Uh, 2018 parks go by and I've said this time and time again I know our council uh, has the same sentiment as well we made a promise that and asked you the voter to go and vote for the parks go by so I'm very adamant to make sure that we fulfill exactly what we said we were going to do in the parks go by and I'll give you an example you're hearing a lot of discussion uh, with J.C. Park, and I personally, myself, have said time and time again, again, you know, I'm just one of eight council members uh, and a majority rules, but I've said before we bite off, take a second bite of that apple and go to either J.C. Park, we have to make sure that we take care of all the parks that we committed to in 2018. So for me, I've always had that stance and I will continue that because I think if I asked you to go vote for something at the polls, then it's my responsibility to give you exactly what I told you we were gonna give you. So we're still moving forward. I know we have additional money set aside. Um, 
we're going to make sure that we get what we promise done first before you know we do anything else. We have the yacht club, of course, with the hurricane that kind of changed the complexity there. Um, but we're going to make sure you know Festival Park and and Crystal Lake and Tropicana. We're going to do exactly what we said we were going to do. Yes, sir. What's the road access going to look like for the Seven Islands? Any changes to the existing roads? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Again, we'll have to see the uh, exactly what you're going to build down there. As we all know, we have that D1 concept plan uh, that we are going to try to stick as close to as possible. Uh, but we'll reevaluate that. You know, right now you have uh, Tropicana, you have Embers. Um, you know, one of the things I did mention uh, uh, that I'm an advocate for is beautification in our city. I think that's one thing. Uh, that we've fallen short on in the last several years. If you look back, uh, I can say this year, uh, we have almost $3 million in the budget for beautification. We've never had that. It's usually about 312000 So uh, we've added more to it each year. It keeps growing and growing. I know Embers is the next one up uh, from uh, Burn Store Road to Old Burn Store. And then the next section uh, will be on the uh, other side, Embers on the other side of uh, Burn Store. So that'll be the next section that we'll do. So uh, I think that's very important. We're doing a uh, tra transportation uh, master plan right now. Right now, We started that probably almost a year ago now. I've been here since 17. That's something we never have even discussed, to be quite honest with you. And so what I did, uh, because I'm on the NPO and also part of our uh, transportation advisory committee, myself and four other council members, we started a transportation master plan study about 10 to 12 months ago. Probably got another six at least before we get that completed. Uh, again, you got to have that vision, you got to have that plan. Uh, and I want to make sure that uh, we have a good transportation master plan. But when you see some of these larger projects uh, that are going to come up, that could be an opportunity where we may have to go back and revisit to see if we have to make any improvements. So that's something we'll have to take a look at. <clears throat> yes, sir. On the water side of the Seven Island project, there's going to be potentially a marina, uh, all that boat traffic coming in from whatever services are there. Uh, is there a plan cut in the development plan? Because all that's got to come through map the shade. Yeah, there's a dredging plan, if that's what you're asking. Go out through the harbor. Yep, and we've already, I've already had that discussion with the city uh, manager now. Um, you know, going out there a few times myself, it's pretty narrow going out. And then you have all the, uh, all the sill that's filled in because of the hurricane. And so I know that we're trying to do some emergency uh, dredging and apply for that now. Uh, but as far as the development of Seven Islands, that was a part of their plan. They want to be able to bring those larger boats in. So that's going to be a benefit to us, the developers with dredge it. So I'm confused. You're, that's developing the existing waterway. There's no plan for a cut across Madison. No, sir. Just to enhance what we had there, put, put some markers in, do some dredging, make it wider. So that's that's the plan, basically. No no new cut. When you guys are too easy. <laughs> yes, oh, John had his hand up. Then I'll come over here to you. Go ahead, John. Mr. Mayor, you run up Trop Camp Park. Mm -hmm. I've been looking far and wide for a long time. I can't find what I'm looking for. Can you tell me where we stand today with the rowing club being in trouble? As of right now, the rowing club is still slated there. That was um, a question. Yeah. I'm sorry. He asked about the rowing club at Tropicana Park, what the status was. I thought she knew something I did. <laughs> um, the rowing club, as of, as of right now, is still uh, uh, slated for Tropicana Park. Of course, there has to be a lease agreement. Uh, we haven't even got to that part yet. Uh, staff hasn't even tried to negotiate a lease with them. Uh, as you know, I was pretty active uh, during the discussion with Tropicana Park when I was a District 1 council member. Um, and as we all know, uh, as a part of the agreement, there was 17,500 square feet of space that the rowing club uh, 
was supposed to take. Now, if that is still the case, then I will make sure that that is exactly what they get. They get the 17,500 square feet. My concern is I don't want to have to go and look at that. I don't want to spend $4 million in a park and you as a resident have to go there and look at what you see uh, where they're at now. So if that means we have to build an eight foot concrete fence, building, whatever, um, you know, we, have, we haven't got to that point yet to start having those discussions. And that's whether they're there. I know there's been some, some discussion. They'd like to see them up at Crystal Lake. Um, you know, if you really think about the Seven Islands project, there's going to be a lot of boat traffic in and out of there. That's a main, that's a main waterway there. Probably up in the uh, Crystal Lake area would be better. Uh, but that, that change hasn't happened yet. Question, yes, sir. When you get an opportunity, I suggest you take a look and dig a little bit into the growing club. I'm told, I'm only told, but I'm sure you can find out that they're charging $300 a month to teach the children how to row. Now we're kicking people out of our parks that are making money and selling services. Here would be an example of that service happening. If you can prove that's right, they probably shouldn't be. Yeah, one of, one of the things he was talking about is uh, council recently made a decision that in some of our parks, uh, we had individuals that were running a business out of there. Uh, I know down in the south part of the Cape, uh, over off of uh, Del Prado, you know, we had some jet skiers. And, um, you know, I know Serenio Vista, I get some, uh, I get some emails. Um, that we had a business there that was running the kayaks. <clears throat> we couldn't pick and choose which businesses we wanted to allow in there. So we decided that any for-profit business, for-profit is the key word, any for-profit business, it wouldn't be able to uh, work out of the park. And uh, I think we put six months, was that six months uh, on that? I think we gave the businesses six months to relocate. We made that uh, decision about a month ago. Um, and that's one thing we'll have to look at with the Rowan Club. I think it's, uh, a, it's a nonprofit uh, organization, but you know we'll have to take it. That's one of the things we'll have to take a look at. Uh, because if, it, if it's a for-profit, they're no different than any other, uh, any other business. Yes, sir? So I don't, I don't want to be a dead horse, but on utilities, OK, like I said before, I live between Kismet and Jack Aranda. What, what zone is that? How far out is that? I mean, I don't I know. You can go on our web page, yeah. um, and it'll show you exactly where where that's at. Um, if you want to come see me after uh, the, after the discussion here, I'll try to get you that information for me. That's eternity, though. But, before that happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't hold me to that. Uh, it won't be here until after I'm here. No, I'm just kidding. Right. No, but I'll be able to get that. I think we have time for one more. And, okay. then, and then we can follow the mayor out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, jeez. Yeah, with the transportation master plan, they'll be looking at all the roadways in the city. They'll be planning for the next 30 years. So they'll take a look at all the roadways. We haven't got that back yet. Like I said, we probably have another probably eight months or so before uh, we, we get get to the end of that uh, that project. But that's something we'll be looking at all the roads. Uh, you know, a lot of our roads, say like Chiquita from uh, Cape Coral Parkway, I know the veterans that that, that can be a uh, three-lane road. And we have several roads throughout the city like that. So we'll start looking at those type of roads that they need to be enlarged as well. I'll be around if you got any questions. Come on up and see me, and I'll try to have an answer for you. If I don't have an answer, I'll get one for you. Thanks for allowing me to stop on. I, I just want to...
I have these invitations on the table. Before you go, please get one. And uh, as we said, Seven Islands is sponsoring this, and they will be there with us. So if everyone can help out, grab your chair. We're going to put them back in the closet. Thanks so much for coming.